Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. presidential election will be the same people who like are like what's a midterm <laughs> that's a thing which are and they're far more important because they have a lot more impact on what actually happens. happens yeah don't blame me like i voted for kodos yeah it's like you want to know why a bunch of obama's policies that you might have liked to have seen pass didn't pass because you skipped voting in the midterm election and the senate is all of our congressmen are disgusting ancient old men who still think who still go women what's that yeah <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> what is that thing? And you know why? Because you didn't vote against them. Because you didn't bother voting in the midterm. Yeah. Oh. So it doesn't matter if you if 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 Donald Trump takes office and you're afraid of that, vote in the midterm and don't give him any support. And so. then, it problem solved. Yeah. Uh, as I say, I'm uh, I'm just so tired. So so tired. Well, I mean, you did it to yourself. To I fault. did. <laughs> I did. No sympathy here. Yeah. That's what I get for going on Reddit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hey everybody, welcome to Game Classy. I am your host, Joe, and with me is always... More like Game Assy. Yes. And with me as always is my co-host, the Iron Man to my Captain America, Steve! Why am I Iron Man? Because you're not Captain America. <laughs> I'm also not Captain America, but no. I mean, I guess I'm neither. Yeah. Can I be, uh... The Blob? Can I be Bucky? <laughs> you could be Bucky. You could be the Bucky to my Captain America. Right, that's fine. You got a metal arm. I yeah. hate, I've talked about this before on uh, Comic Book Logic. I hate the design of Bucky. I think he's one of the worst design characters of all time. What is it due to the metal arm? Yeah, I, the metal arm is okay, but it's like the straggly hair and raccoon eyes and like that stupid mask in front of us. I think it's just so ugly. It's like one of the ugliest design costumes of all time. Better looking than you. It's true. He is better looking than me and much more handsome. Yes. Your design's pretty bad. <laughs> I, am, I am designed poorly. <laughs> oh, Gen X. Um, so, I mean, we do got some stuff to talk about. I got a lot of other crazy stuff, too. You know what I did last night? Uh, something obnoxious? No, actually, I went and played laser tag. Oh, all right. There's this place in Aurora that, um, they, it's called Eye Combat Laser Tag. Oh, my and God. And you actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The story's now getting worse. <laughs> no, it's, but, um, the, instead of, like, the, the pew pew laser guns that you get, like, you used to get, like, with the chest plate and like everything. Laser like, Quest, yeah. Yeah, like Laser Quest. Oh, I love Laser Quest. Yeah. You have the big smoke fog and everything's, like, carpeted with, like, that purple carpet. Yeah, and you run under their bases and you shoot the bases. <laughs> and you get points. Steve needs a kiss. That's Not true. from me. But no, maybe later. later. Yeah, maybe later. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah, you run around, you shoot the bases. This place, the the guns are um, like police training, like or military training weapons that are modified to shoot like lasers. Oh god! It's it, well, and the nice thing is, is that they feel this. This really sounds like one of those places where like those like wannabe like. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but we we actually rented it out for a bachelor party. You okay. know, we had like. 14 guys so we got to play two teams of yeah, seven I, I, I like i just imagine like four skinny nerds together just be like hoorah marines eh, pew, pew, pew. Well, i was talking with I've, I've been there before and i i was talking with the guy because i was you know just shooting the shit before the before the game started and i'm like so do you get guys in here who are like really into this and he's like oh yeah hand signals and everything God like damn it i'm like and the place is not like a stand like the standard laser tag place has like these ramps made of plywood that are carpeted and there's the black light and the black light yeah and, and then, then of course the you bring back memories and crappy pizza out yep. front oh yep. it's so good but the uh no this place is like and not pepsi not coke but rc, RC. oh this place had rc <laughs> see <laughs> yeah rc is the stalwart the stalwart companion to all laser tag and mini golf emporiums is that like a is that like a you think that's like a chicago land thing or is that like a uh, royal crown no that's everywhere i know but i mean like always having royal crown at like the crappy places oh. like i think that might be like a, a chicago land i don't know thing. i mean i've never done like mini golf or laser tag outside of uh yeah, that's what i'm land. saying i've never done so that i, I so. can't say yeah I, I i did i did do mini golf in florida but it was at a disney mini golf thing so it was yeah. you know well there you go any swank. of our any of our u.s listeners who are around i would say u.s just because it's probably a, i doubt rc is yeah in, even though it is the royal, royal crown, crown cola yeah. i don't think it's in other uh, other countries yeah but the uh so if you're in the in the u.s if you uh if you go to like a mini golf place do they have rc like specifically the RC on the fountain soda. So yeah. you're like, and you're like all these other like 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 what would uh, not like Mr. Pib and stuff like that. I like Mr. Pib. Well, yeah, a lot of people like Mr. Pib. I like Royal Crown. <laughs> they too. call him Mr. Pib. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so but this place is not like like with the ramps and the carpet and the black light. It's got like it's decorated like a, I guess like a haunted house. 
So you're like going through like a haunted house, uh, you know, combat fighting, whatever you want to call it. But the place is insane, and it, it's a lot of fun to play because, especially because it's like, it's a non-standard laser tag. So you you feel uh, the rooms are a lot bigger, and sometimes they're a lot more enclosed. But it's 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 fun. And my uh, I started off, I got slaughtered in the first round. Just just I think my kill death ratio was like eight to two. It's because you weren't doing the hand signals. I, it's because I wasn't. But then I was just like, I was like, screw it. I'm not achieving any objectives. I'm just going to sit in one point and I'm just going to shoot everyone that comes by me. And then my kill death ratio was like 14 kills to one death. Yeah, I felt that, very good. Now you know why people camp in first person shooters. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can't get shot if you aren't running out in the middle of the map. There you go. No, but they do like scenarios like you have to go <laughs> get the objective and bring it back to the base and stuff like that. Uh. Or, or like you have to camp at the objective, things like that. It's. You know, it's fun, whatever. I can't complain. <laughs> I would recommend it if you're in the Chicago land area. Go to the eye combat laser tag. It's like thirty bucks for I think an hour and a half of play. Or like an hour fifteen of play. And it's unlimited ammo because it's because the guns have like cartridges, like CO two cartridges in it, so that when you run out of CO two, you actually have to go and get a refill. Like and they you know, it, it's it's inside the uh the clip mm. for the gun. So you have the pop magazine, clip. yeah, mag, whatever. I don't. I'm not a gun guy. <laughs> magazine clip, b- b- the blazuki. I don't know what it's called. And <laughs> the <they>, blazuki. <laughs> who care? Who cares? <laughs> I'm not running around with a gun. I know that like, like Dave Max is like crushing his his like iPhone as he's listening to this. I mean, well, perhaps he really appreciated that I corrected you. <laughs> yeah, he probably did. He's like he's crushing it, and then all of a sudden you cr- he's like leads off of it. <laughs> it's like all right. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's and you you get unlimited ammo and you run around. It, they replace it and you get the and it kicks back when you shoot too. That's kind of fun too. I mean, so. probably kicks because of the CO two. Well, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's where they they charge it up with the CO two, and uh, it, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I I would think that our listeners would enjoy that place too. You know, because they probably have that weird paramilitary feel to it. Like I want to be a soldier. Yeah, I don't. I don't really get it. No, I don't get it either. <laughs> I'm I'm just like, yeah, this is kind of fun because I'm running around shooting guns. You know, laser guns. Beep, beep. <laughs> and uh they have like these like when you're running through it they have these like trigger plates that if you step on it like all of a sudden like air will blast in your face or a siren will go off <laughs> it's, just, it's nuts it's pretty fun but highly recommend it uh actually uh, i also wanted to give an update about half price books remember how it was last episode i was bitching and moaning about mm-hmm. them super super upping their prices mm-hmm. just went back to de- uh yesterday and their prices were actually reduced on those, and they were put back on the shelf and not in that super glass case with out of print put it on all the labels. I'm like, good. Fuck you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, also, I had a comment from a listener, Tom, who I, I game with regularly. He wanted to ask you a question. Okay. Um, he wanted to know about the One Ring uh, uh, role-playing game. Oh, the, what about it? He just wanted to know if it's if it's worth it. Oh, um, if you are into Tolkien and storytelling, it's great. Yeah, uh, it is. N- it is. It is a very unique game. Uh, it's not structured like D anD D or anything along those lines. Um, it's very based on the story and the way the game is. The way the game is structured is it's it's like a. It's structured like a Tolkien story. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's happening in between uh, The Hobbit and the, uh, the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. That's the time frame it's in. It's very precise on like that time frame. So like it, it only covers stuff that's happen- happening there. There's a lot. I mean, it's, you know, it's tons of many years between those two events. But uh, the way the game works is you have a, you have like a quest phase, which is you and the, the which is the party going and doing their adventure. And the adventures almost always involve travel. You know, you go from here to yeah. here. As Kevin Smith so eloquently pointed out in Clerks 2. Yeah, I mean, that's that's <laughs> a big part of The Lord of the Rings is, you know, like, they are traveling. They don't go, like... Yeah. The, it, uh, the journey is a really, you know, important part of the story. Uh, and then after the quest is over, you have... I can't remember what they call the second part, but you have, like, a... You basically have downtime. And your what your character does in downtime is just as important as what they do during their quest. And there's like a whole different, you know, like so your dwarf, uh, say you're on you're on the quest to like regain your family's honor, and then like you go and complete the quest, and then you come back, and then it's like your family honor is returned. So like, what happens after that? You do that without like the the group separates. It's it's done really really. Uh, it's cool. It's very neat. Um, 
I'd say it's it's definitely challenging as far as role playing games go because it's not a game where you're like I'm gonna hit this with my sword. Like, yeah, okay. It is not that kind of game. If you're looking for that style in Tolkien universe, I would suggest Merp or the Decipher Lord of the Rings. Okay. Um, if you're into more of like a story based, you know, really descriptive, and you have a lot of very good, like it, they want to be like deep role players, I would recommend the One Ring. Um, I think it's great, and the books are all beautiful. Like they're worth collecting alone. Like if you're not. Uh, if you don't care about playing the game, like just reading it, like the background is awesome. Like they're working with the Tolkien estate. Like everything is official. Like they have to approve every supplement before they release it. So it's all, you know, completely official. Oh, that's cool. Backed by, you know, like Tolkien. And it's, it's really cool. It's got like, you know, it's like what happens, like what's going on with Lake Town. Cause you know, like, you know, the story of what happens with Lake Town and Smaug and like all this stuff. But what happens with Lake Town while, like, before the Lord of the Rings story? You know, it has, like, how their, like, political system changes and, like, what, you know, what Bard does and that kind of stuff, which is cool. Like, it's just a, an amazing, like, chunk of Middle Earth. Yeah. And the, the game's great. I, and I think it's fantastic. I recommend it to everyone who has a group that can uh, do it. And, but it's hard. It's not, like I said, it's, yeah. it, it will not work if you have a group of munchkins. Yeah, I think, I, well, I think he wants to play with his son, so I, I probably... It probably work great. Well, I mean, his son's younger, so still I probably were great. Yeah, well. I find I actually find that little kids are easier to get into the because little kids they care less; they don't give a fuck about the rules. Yeah, like a little kid is more likely to just tell you what their character does rather than look for what, how their character can do it. And that's little kids are in general like they because they still have that you know they have the sense of wonder. It's not really the sense of wonder; it's they have the ability to imagine unbound. Yeah. Because when you're playing a role playing game as an adult, your you know your senses are all about you. You know you are playing a game, so a lot of people are more inclined to go. I need to see what like how I can do this. Like I know what I want to do. I want to move this boulder and do this thing. But rather than just going like I'm going to do that and then like you know get excited and like the the DM's like okay here's how to do it. A lot of people fall into the trap, especially in more rules heavy systems, of looking at their character sheet. Yeah. Trying to figure out how they can mechanically apply that. Be like I'm going to use uh my rocksmithing. <laughs> skill and my strength is 20 so i'm gonna i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna do it this way mechanically and they'll like roll a dice so you're, you know you're more likely to actually have a younger kid give you the just like i'm gonna do this and you could be like great and then you you show them how to you know use the like you show them how to resolve the task not the mechanics behind it oh yeah uh, so like I think that I think it would be great for to playing with a kid. Um, the dice system is really cool too. You uh, your character like there's like a doom mechanic Ooh. where like the, it's basically evil. Like the evil evil gets like generates bigger and like you're as like the uh, session goes on like that like goes up higher based on your like the party's dice rolls. And then like there's a there's a penalty that like it comes out it's like you know the doom like comes down like the hammer. Uh, it's, it's cool. It's it's very good. Uh, I have not played it. Full disclosure. Uh, I've read the rules. Um, it was a while ago. Uh, I think it was like a year and a half ago. I was really re reading them. Uh, but uh, I would love to play it. But it's like it's a game that I would. I don't know anyone, and I know some pretty decent role players, and I know no one who I would play that game with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's it's just it's it's just one. Of, it's just like I, I think it. Would, I think it's probably it's probably ideal for a convention game. I think if you, I think it's might be the best convention RPG there is because if you're playing because who put it out? Um, it's by Cubicle Seven. Oh, okay. Uh, the same guys who make the Doctor Who RPG. Uh, the biggest the thing that's great about it and why I say it's a convention RPG is because I think it's a game that that behooves very well for <clears throat> people who really want to participate in the game. And if you have a group of people who all know each other, there's always that like table talk, which is which is fine. Um, but I think the less you know each other, I think the better you're going to do with like as a group in that game. Simply because people are going to be there, they're going to be invested, and they're going to want to play the game rather than talk about whatever or you know dick around on their phones or you know it just it, it'll just work better that way. You know, he was talking about that, and you know what it made me think of for some odd reason. I don't know why, but it was the Middle Earth uh, CCG from like the 1990s. You remember that game? Oh, the one with the back that has the RSR on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? I played that game. The game was great. I I, I remember because I was. It was about 95. I really hadn't read, like, I think I'd read The Hobbit at that point. Mm -hmm. I didn't even really understand. And I remember the guy who was running my local game store. Um, he, w I think his name was Lynn. I don't know why that came back to me. But um, <laughs> he was, because I was I'm really into the Decipher Star Wars game mm -hmm. at that time. I think it was like 95, 96. And he was like, oh, this this game's out. And it's like a really great rules. And it's, it's called, you know, Middle Earth. I, th I think that's what it's called, right? 
Um, shit. I think it's Shadows of something. Shad- yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's Middle Earth collectible card game. It might be that. Yeah. I, I just remember. I remember the. I was. I bought it and I had it. Yeah. And the cards were awesome. They had the the, the black but, back with the Eye of Sauron. Like they look fucking sick. Well, yeah. Well, I had not, I had not read the Lord of the Rings by that at that point. I think okay. I was like fifteen or sixteen at the time. And I remember he gave it. And uh, he gave he. I bought a pack of. I bought a starter deck and I opened it up and I was playing and I was looking at the cards and everything. And I'm like, wait a second, hobbits. <laughs> Is this like the Hobbit? Is this is this have to do with the Hobbit? And he's like, "Yeah, you idiot. <laughs> this is it's Lord of the Rings." And I was like, "Oh, okay. I know what that is." <laughs> I, I kind of because I remember my 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 parents had a nice hardbound Lord of the Rings set at the house, so I that's what it got me to read the book was the collectible card game. I remember going through it and I was just like, "What's a ring wraith? What the <laughs> hell is all of this stuff? This isn't in the Hobbit." <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was like as a young kid going through it, I just remember, I remember seeing that card game. It was actually a really nice, like all the artwork on it was really nice because it was all like drawn, of course. Yeah. It was like all really All great hand drawn art. Yeah. And the Eye of Sauron. And it wasn't like the Eye of Sauron from the movies. It was like a big, like you. It's like a big red eye. Yeah, but yeah. it had like a U like underneath it. Like it was like the well, top of the tower. it looks like an eye, not yeah. an eye of flame. Yeah, exactly. So it was like, it, you know, thinking back to it, I was like, God, how would I even know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, the uh, the Decipher movie based Lord of the Rings card game was also great. I don't know. I didn't. I never played that Super one. Super good. It, it was. Well, I Decipher would, was a great company. I would actually well, say that it is Decipher's best card game. Is Decipher even still around? Uh, he, sort of. <laughs> They're like a. <laughs> they probably got bought by someone. No, or, no, no, no. They exist, but I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, they made the last thing they were doing was Fight Club. Um. I don't know what they've done since then because like they don't have any of their property. Like they lost all their license because they were they were a company based yeah. entirely on licensing, and they obviously lost Star Wars to Wizards of the Coast, and then uh, Star, Star Trek, Trek. They just yeah. lost. They didn't lose to another company. They just lost. The Paramount took the rights back, um, and then Lord of the Rings. Their rights expired with New Line. So un- they, that was one of the things that sucked. Is that game was super successful. Yeah, that card game, and the only reason it died is because they couldn't. They were not legally allowed to make any more cards. It was just like, yep, done. And the game was hot. It was it was a very successful game. Uh, super fun. It was a it was a great game. Like one of the best card games I think I've ever played. To be honest, it's super fucking good. Wait, which card game? The Lord of the Rings. Oh, the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was super good. Um, yeah. You know that, and, and you know the only the only like some people and some people complained about. I, for me, like I didn't mind that the game. It was all movie stills. Like, yeah, I didn't care about that, but I can see some people like having a complaint about like like oh it's just you know it's pictures. But I mean the Star Wars game was like that too. So yeah, the uh, it looks like they they haven't done anything because from here it looks like they've done two games since like they lost everything. Mm-hmm. I think they they have a mur- they do a murder mystery game. They have Fight Club, which yeah. was with a K. It's not yep, it's not, Club with a K. Not, not that, Tyler Durden. That game was sold when Kilos. Yeah, and uh, Boy Crazy is another one. Yeah, Boy Crazy. That one's old as shit. Yeah, it, I guess that they just got the the rights. They put out the the newest set in I think 2010. It says here they still exist though. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it says they're RPGs that they got the Star Trek role playing game and uh, the Lord of the Rings role playing game, which are both yeah. gone. Obviously, yeah. I mean that's it. Just sucks because they had. I'm actually collecting those. Yeah, that's <laughs> what we talked about the last time. Yeah. right? the oh no, the Star Trek ones. Sure. Uh, both. Yeah, yeah, I'm collecting yeah. the, the Decipher Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and Decipher Star Trek. Because man, that even the Decipher Star Trek card game was pretty good. I remember yeah, from back it was cool. They, they uh they they the second edition was a uh, much improved. Yeah, um, they did a good job with it. And I think I've gone on record saying numerous times that I love the Star Wars one. Yeah, it was Star Wars was good. It was so good back M- in the day. Minus the fact that the like game's optimal strategy became not about Star Wars at all, but no, <laughs> it became sitting on a planet, yeah, avoiding as much conflict. Like, as- you avoid the other person <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, then you just you force uh force drain force drain. But yeah, oh, so good. You know, <laughs> but that's the thing is like, so I've re- I've read two books recently, and I think, and I don't think either of them have um, any any properties based off of them. I could be wrong on on either because I, I just I didn't I haven't done super deep research into it. But one is uh, Joe Abercrombie's First Law World. He just put out a new book for it called Sharp Ends. Um, and I highly recommend it. I think I told you about it numerous times to read it, uh, or at least listen to the audiobooks because the audiobooks are really good on yeah, it. Yeah, I think you were telling me about it when you were reading the first one. Yeah, the first law. It's like six books, uh, seven books now. Um, the first three is an actual trilogy. 
the next three are like standalone books, but they're novels. They're not like short stories. And then the last one that just came out is like a collection of all the short stories that he would like put into a book that he wrote. You're a short story. Yes. Um, highly recommend it. It's grim, dark fantasy, but with like a really good sense of humor. Um, like everything. So it, not Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's not. You no, know, it's I would make a good comparison to Game of Thrones because of like the political manipulation that goes on. And there's like a lot of like stuff that you don't know that's going on, like. Like characters really hide their uh, their motivation, but it's it's multi character. So like you follow different characters throughout the books, like and you follow per chapter is usually like a different character, which works fantastic, very much of the Game of Thrones style, and it's um, a very well fleshed out world. To the point where it's like, if he doesn't explain something, you're like, I want to know more about this. <laughs> Tell me more about this, you know? Tell me more. <laughs> but not but not in a bad way. You know, it's not like, well, this doesn't make any sense, but this is more like... Oh, it's this... not omission. It's yeah. like, uh, it's just like, oh, it's, 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 I don't know how to think. It's more breadcrumbs. Like, yeah, breadcrumbs. Like mystery almost. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, breadcrumbs, not nothing. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's very RPG-ish in a lot of ways because it's like... There's this land and this land and this land. It's all kind of connected into like a like a super. It's it's very well done, and I if you any listener who is listening to this right now, if you like to read fantasy and you've not read anything Joe Abercrombie, you could read that or his. He did a, I think it's called the Shattered Seas. It's another trilogy. It's kind of young adult, but the only difference is, is it's the same writing style. Except this one has a lot less sex and swearing. In it. <laughs> like the first Lost series has a ton of swearing, a ton of sex. It's it's pretty good. I would say it's oh disgusting. It's it, that's um. Like, Hear that duck? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first law is like it's it's just more like twenty something people. The young adult one is just you know fifteen sixteen year old. It's All it's right. pretty good. And the other one is um the Expanse books. Uh the Expanse series I. Have you watched that show yet? No. So I've talked about it on the show before. I've heard nothing but good things about it. So it's a fantastic show. It's got Thomas Jane in it. You love Thomas I Jane. I do love Thomas Jane. Yeah. I, I have nothing against it. I, I haven't seen it. It, look, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, um. The the show is like the first third of the first book. So I was like, I didn't know that it was only like a third of the book. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna read the book. So that way, you know, I can. Are you blitz past it? <laughs> yeah. Way past it. The first the first book is like probably three seasons worth of material. Okay. Right on that one. So I was like, fuck. Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to read the rest of the series now just because I've blown so far past it. Um, that's another one that should be an RPG. Hands down. It yeah. is. It would make the best science fiction style RPG I've ever seen. All right. Because sci-fi RPGs, there's not a, a ton of them that work. The best one, I think, is Burning Empire. Which is the Burning Wheel, uh, sci-fi version. Yeah. Uh, and I think the reason it's the best is because like the 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 universe it's in is kind of generic. It's like there's these weird aliens and there's a war, blah blah blah. But the system is Burning Wheel, so you can just take whatever sci-fi universe you want and use the Burning Wheel system. Yeah, this would that would probably which is really good minus combat. That's the only complaint I have about Burning Wheel is I think the combat is miserable. Yeah, I don't. I've never played Burning Wheel. Burning Wheel is a cool. Burning Wheel is an organic. Uh, the, the the character growth in Burning Wheel is organic. So the way it works is when you make a test, so like a uh, laser blast or whatever, uh, you roll your laser blast skill and you just like you, you check, you like make little tick marks when you use a skill successfully or when you don't. And uh, when you fill enough of these tick marks, your skill goes up. Oh, that's cool. And so it's, it's kind of <clears throat> like your character just gets better at doing what you're doing. So... If you're not paying attention and trying to like game it, it's cool because your character grows organically. So you're like, oh, well, my I've been fucking shooting the shit out of people, so my laser blaster skill is way higher now. Yeah. And like that's just it's just an organic character growth, which is neat. Um, I like the way that the skills improve. Uh, it's it is very weird when you read it, and like trying to explain it is fucking impossible. Like <laughs> I I don't know what it is, but like trying to explain. Some, to someone how to play burning like burning games is like you you need training to do it sure. <laughs> it's because it's it's like you read it and it's like it's so it reads so fucking convoluted but when you like see it being played you're like oh it's it's one of those games where you know it, it reads like fucking quantum mechanics is it written by british people it is not. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, it is an. In, it is an independent uh, American author. I was gonna um, say. Usually, that's what I find with a lot of British rules. Yeah. It's very cool. It, it, the thing is, I, it's because the the words are or the words, the uh, the mechanics and the wordings are somewhat. They seem somewhat convoluted because the game 
is more like an engine like a, like it's more like a computer yeah. game engine than it is a role playing game because like like once once you've established the characters things just work and like the the players keep track of their own shit so like as they're doing things their characters are getting better and it's it's like almost automated yeah. so like to make that happen you need to like program your player to be like oh okay here's how this works yeah. so that's you know it's a little different than other games which are more reactive and you know it's cool it's a great generic sci-fi setting and i think this i think the the skill system works actually because it's burning burning wheel is a fantasy game yeah i think that the way that the system works actually behooves a sci-fi setting better uh because i think sci-fi games make sense to be more skill-based well that's the thing too is like you know rpgs are generally the domain of sword and sorcery and it's like and i was thinking about this because i was thinking like god damn there should be an rpg in the expanse there 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 needs to be and i was just like well what other sci-fi games like could you and i was like well everything else is based off of property there's like no dungeons and dragons for sci-fi there was uh eternity eternity yeah that one was a uh, generic it was a it had a it had a world but it was also generic yeah that was the last one i can think of and that was made by uh was that was wizards uh that was wizard sci-fi rpg in the 90s yeah i mean like seriously the the expanse like setting is it's so beautiful because it only takes place in our solar system there's no like i'm gonna get in hyperspace and fly off to planet alpha centauri no there's none of that so it's all just earth mars like the moons of the of the gas giants and the and the uh and the asteroid belt sounds like gundam yeah <laughs> Except there's no giant robots that are dumb and don't and defy the law of physics. Um, Dude, they can def- they can defy all the laws of physics they want when they're in space, bay. Yeah, the and the the series and the show is very realistic physics, but with like slight sci-fi twists to them. So like, well, it would take 19 weeks to get from or uh, 19 months to get from Earth to Mars. Well, in this one, there's a engine that's invented that cuts that in like a third. So there's still travel time in it, but there's not, like, ridiculous travel time. So they can make the the stuff happen a lot farther. There's three factions. There's the Earth, uh, United Nations Alliance. Mars is its own, like, faction, like its breakaway faction. And then there's the OPA, the Outer Planetary Alliance, which are all these people who grew up in outer space. So, like, their bodies are all, like, long and distorted because they never got, like, proper gravity uh, like everything spins, so out, the gravity exists on space stations, but it's not quite Earth. So people are taller; they have weaker bones, or and all the combat that they talk about there is all zero G combat. It's it's so perfectly designed for an RPG. It sounds cool for someone who wants a realistic setting, yeah. but I think a lot of people who are interested in sci-fi RPGs don't want that. Yeah, they want fucking Star Wars and fucking laser swords and magic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. I would or, or like tech that's so far advanced, you know, like Gundams and starships yeah. and, you know, hyperdrives and warp drives and laser blasters, <sighs> teleporters. It's so and there's there's only I, well, I don't want to give it away in case people want to watch the show. But there are like some sci fi things that happen that are pretty cool and they would fit so well. I mean, into it's, an RPG. It sounds like it's a hard science fiction. So like yeah. it can work for RPGs just like Alien. Alien's a hard science fiction. Um, yeah. The, it, so, like, that's great. I mean, hard science fiction is awesome, and it, it definitely has a place. But I think just like how you said RPGs are more the the uh, sword pur- purview of sword oh. and sorcery, I think uh, sci-fi RPGs are more the purview of, like, fantastic sci-fi. Like, the Ray Bradbury, like, everything is ridiculous. Like, you know, we're... Tr- we're quantum ta- drives. Right, and yeah. Then... It's like, we've invented a quantum drive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Take, I, uh, this This is more like all the weapons are are, are still, like, it's kind of like Battlestar Galactica, with all the weapons are like actual slug throwers. Yeah, because like yeah. I, I, I think one of the, and I think one of the reasoning, well, like for me personally, one of the things that one of the reasons that a realistic sci-fi game wouldn't appeal to me is because I feel like I would be getting something wrong, oh. and like and it's just kind of like you know, it's like it's like it's, you can't. Uh, uh, it's like yeah, no. <laughs> watch the. I I really recommend that you watch the show. It sounds great. I or, mean, or read the audiobook. I of the love first hard one. sci-fi. Yeah. Like hard sci-fi is awesome. Just the, I think for like. To gamify it, I think yeah. it's uh, probably not as fun. Because you know what? You know what happens when you make a, a a game out of hard sci-fi? You get Eve online. Oh, but people <laughs> love Eve. You know what? People do. It's a, it's it, it has the most dedicated. It's it's small. I think there's like two hundred and fifty thousand players or so. I thought there was more than that. Mm, I don't think so. Uh, I there might be. I. I haven't kept up, but I... I, I mean, do. the way that it's portrayed in the media makes me feel like it's a much bigger plant fan base well, than... The, it, you yeah. know why? It's because, like, the players who are playing it never stop. 
Like they have just been playing that game for forever. And the reason it like it's big in the media is because that game is the only game that has literal financial damage and collapse when like wars happen. Oh my god. Some of the story like I love reading about the, Eve the, online. The Eve stories are the best. They're fan and like even like when you watch the live unfolding of it, you're still kind of like, I have no idea what's going on, but yeah. this is this is awesome. Yeah. That's the thing. It's just it's it is the most exciting, boring game, game. ever made. <laughs> and I've tried playing it too, and I'm like, this game is Dude, miserable to play. The, the fucking trying to fight another ship, and your ship is just like, oh my god. It's like it's so bad. It's just like you you click 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 click, and your ship's just flying around by itself. Oh fuck. Yeah. And, but you know what I you know what I ended up doing when I was playing Eve? I ended up just sitting in a base, just being a stockbroker. Yeah. I was just like, "Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna trade this." And like, I'd fly somewhere. I'd be like, "Oh, wait, I know, I can get that. I can get that. Uh, that uh, I can get that chemical at that other base for like half that price." So then, like, I fucking fly my ship over, and it takes real time. So it's like yeah. your ship will be there in 20 hours. I'm like, "Okay, gonna log off and like go back the next day." I'm like, "Ooh, I have arrived." So then, like, I buy all the chemicals at half price. I'm like, yes, I'm buying this place out. And then I'm like, I'm gonna go fly back to the other one, and then I put it at for sale at the local market for double the price that I paid, but still less than it just it and it's i'm making all so, this money i'm like woo <laughs> and then i realized i'm like what am i doing <laughs> it's like i've made over like one billion credits credits or quatlus i made over a billion quatlus <laughs> and and that translates to a real world equivalent of six dollars and 48 cents no some of that that shit is big money i mean i love the concept I, one of my my favorite story is still that spy guy like so they went and they yeah who did who destroyed the other guild or yeah. the uh, co uh, corporation? So they yeah they went into there and they they stole all of this tech. Like and it was years of infiltration. It was so, I'm just like <laughs> oh my god this is insane. And then you're like you're like oh this is this is fantastic and you're reading about it and then they're like the guild of doggy style fucking decided to and i'm just like oh why can't these guys just role play correctly for a change oh dude it's it's ridiculous well the best part is that that war is that war that's currently happening is literally happening like for a real world reason i know like one of the the dude who was running the that like one empire just like started demanding taxes from like a bigger like a bigger area and they're like no fuck you we're not giving you taxes and he's like no you're going to pay us or we're going to come and we're going to destroy your ships and they're like fuck you and then all of the other guys like rise up to fight against them ridiculous it's amazing <laughs> yeah. and it's it's like, but once again, it's still like this is the most boring thing in the world to yep. play. But man, is it awesome to read about? And of course, you know the the best is when you read about you know the guys who like. Aren't they doing like a, an RPG for Eve? I heard something like they're doing something with Eve now. It's different, um, maybe like a movie. There's a, or... there's a virtual reality dogfighting game coming out for Eve. Maybe that's why I saw. It's like going to be one of the headset games. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, it's just you're 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 in a fucking fighter ship and you're yeah. flying around. I love dogfighting um, games. The. Uh, the best was like the one guy who's just like, there was like the pirate guy who's just like, if you don't give us money, we're gonna destroy your ship. And he's like, you won't destroy your ship. It's worth so much money. He just like blows up like five hundred dollars. Just like boom. <laughs> it's like, oh, destroyed your ship and all your cargo. He's like, I only wanted a bit of it. Now nobody gets it. <laughs> I was like, fuck, that's ridiculous. Uh, and then of course, you know, your pod comes out and they can destroy your pod. So if you don't need, oh man, yeah, that game is uh, it is in depth. It is super hard sci-fi, and it is like I said, the most boring, exciting game. Ever. <laughs> yeah, it, I'd, I'd much rather just read about it than not take part yes. in it at all. Yeah. But this, yeah, Expanse has that kind of feel to it. A lot of a lot of that stuff. I think if I think if I was like independently wealthy and I had like a room I could turn into like a room that looked like a fucking spaceship, I'd play Eve. I'd just like sit in my chair and just be like boop, 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 with like the boop, boop, with like boop, boop, super high tech graphics cards, so oh, everything yeah. looks fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. like and all I'd, the mods. And yeah, everything. and I would do yeah. I would do multi monitors, like just like a huge like wall of monitors, so oh, yeah. like I could look to the right and be like, oh yeah, that sounds good. And I was like, and I would set up fucking you know fucking levers and shit. <laughs> Yeah, just, I, you no, know, no, you wouldn't do that. You'd pay well, someone yeah, to do that. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, an, I'm an exorbitantly wealthy person. I wouldn't do my own work. No, if you, you you call a Pat and be like, Pat, I need you to come here and do this. And Give he me would a be, robot. He would be so excited to do it too. Yeah, he would be. Yeah, and then he'd be like, "Can I play?" And you'd be like, "No, go Never. away, peasant." <laughs> yeah, go play on your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> your laptop. <laughs> I have corporate. I have corporate espionage to do. It would be like. Cole, you won't see me for three days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's got a pressurized chamber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I get out of there. I'm just like, oh, those corporate dealings. <laughs> you know, that, the thing that's ridiculous about that game is you could literally just be a CEO. 
Yeah. Like, you could just be like, yeah, I don't do that. Like, I'm a CEO. Like, I sit in this one base, and I just talk to people and tell them. And, of course, you know, you, you hire fucking truckers. Like, there's literally truckers. Like, you could just be like, yeah, what do you do? I haul fucking cargo. Like, I have my friend who is a, who is a fucking gunship who travels with me in my giant cargo vessel. I haul freight. Oh and I have God. a I have a guard. What do we do when we play Eve? We fucking haul freight. Players pay us to move their cargo from one place to another, and they pay us handsomely because we get it there. And then on the other side is you could be a fucking robber where you're just like, I'm going to rob those trucks. Well, that would be more fun than hauling the trucks. But see that the hauling trucks would make you more money. Yeah. Because you can because because that's the thing you can because uh, the way that you know the way the game works when you get deep is you can travel different routes. To get places, yeah, and the way the, the way it works is like the longest route, the safest one that has patrol ships and like guardian, like NPC guardians will help you. It takes the longest, so like it'll be eight days to get there along this route. But you can take the route that's very risky that has almost no security, but it'll take you four days. So if you want to take the four day route, you literally need to have like a gunship with you because like someone's yeah. gonna try and rob you. But you can charge a player more money if you're like, I'll get it there in four days, guaranteed. And like that's you know it's like okay well then I will pay your ridiculous fee and you and your fucking bro like roll and take four hours to get there and you're like bam done. That's ri- that's I, I it's so boring, <laughs> so boring. It's amazing and boring. Yes. Ah, uh, all right. Uh, so uh, getting to some gaming news. We talked like a half hour about non. Well, I guess sort of gaming stuff. It was all gaming related. Gaming related. Um. So it looks like we've won. Uh, Age of Sigmar has decided to go with points. Um, how do you feel about that, Steve? I well, I, I I guess I like it. I mean, like I I said before, the system seemed fine, but it was unplayable because you couldn't play it. Now that they're actually giving the game points, I guess I can't shit on it. I literally cannot shit on it as hard because I actually did like the simplicity of that system. It's not a block fantasy game by any means, obviously. Yeah. But like I thought, the game itself wasn't really that bad. I like the simple stat stat lines. I like the independent rules and the war scrolls. And now that it's gonna have points, well, fuck. I, I guess I can't. I, like my biggest complaint, like two two biggest complaints. One, no points, and two, the the fucking stupid mustache rules. Like <laughs> yeah, the, those two. Like they, as far as I know, the mustache rules still exist. But if they don't give those models points, then they don't matter. Well, a lot of those stupid ass rules were really for the old armies that right, don't which are getting exi- discontinued anyway. They're getting discontinued anyway. So, like, I think none of the newer stuff had any of those stupid ass rules, but yeah, now that but the it's more of like, how do you feel about Games Workshop's grand experiment of no points, utterly collapsing upon itself? I I am not surprised. Yeah, I, and that's and the thing is too is they didn't they didn't even try because you don't need to use points. Wrath of Kings is a game that has zero points. Wrath of Kings is a slot system where you get to use twelve infantry, two specialists, one like character or whatever yeah and then you can swap to you can swap a specialist for like six more infantry or swap six infantry for another specialist whatever it's it's not points but it is it is still structured yeah it's a structure having a game with no structure when people and it's not even for like competitiveness it's not even like i want to play this game competitively it's it's like friendly I i want to go to a fucking store with my friend and play a game how the fuck do we do that do we just like eyeball it and it's like, oh yeah, it doesn't. It didn't really work. His fucking shit was way better than mine. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I completely agree. It's like it's nonsense. Yeah, it's so like I can't even eyeball it. You know, it, so that's stupid. That that's a fucking worthless waste of a game. It, just something. You need some kind of fucking well, structure. And that's the thing too is that the way that Games Workshop like does everything is that a a structure system like Wrath of Kings would not work because everything is so counter wonky and an execution oh, they want you to pay more they want you to buy more models too. well not, not even well yeah that but i mean you can't you can't buy more models and expand your army in wrath of kings like if you buy everything you kind of max out yeah no what i'm saying is is that an executioner in no way matches up with like a halberdier from an empire halberdier right they did they they're not interchangeable so like a slot system for fantasy would never work right because it's too much effort to actually make things balanced in fantasy. So. Well, a lot of the Age of Sigmar stuff is really close together. Like, it's a lot closer than before. Yeah. So, like, they could do a, they could have done a slot system for Age of it's Sigmar. Sigmar. Yeah, but they would have to discontinue all old, like, right. no, no, nothing would have models. Yeah, anymore. all the old stuff would be gone, which is it's, it's going that way anyway. Like, they, I think they got rid of the High Elves, the Bretonians, and the Tomb Kings. Um. Well, the, the Tomb Kings and the Bretonians are gone. 
the high elves are getting wrapped into the elf army. Okay. So it's not like they're gone. They're gone as high elves, just in the same way that orcs are gone as orcs. Now right. they're orcs. And that's a and that's a shame because some of the Tomb Kings models are some of the best that Games Workshop made. The Ushapti were fucking awesome. Yeah, the Ushapti are really good. The big statues were really cool. Uh, the, they were like it, like the Andro Sphinx and the Gyno Sphinx. Oh yeah yeah, 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 they were really cool. Um, but <laughs> eh, whatever. Yeah, that's like, what are you gonna do about it? It's just, the Snake Riders were dumb. Yeah, I like but, the, I like the snakes. Right, they had the snakes with the with the halberds because you could make them as the Snake Riders or you could make them as snakes with like arms and halberds. The arms and halberd snakes look really cool. Yeah, because they look like crazy like you know cobra constructs. The dudes riding the snakes were cobra, dumb. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. La, 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 la. No, that's, co- that's, Cobra, la, la, that's Cobra La. la. Cobra Kai is the evil dojo from oh. Karate Kid. <laughs> I'm sure they would align with Cobra. Yeah. Well, of course they would align with They have Cobra. Cobra in their name. Oh, God. God. Behold my, my triple threat of Cobra. Cobra La and Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, on one hand, you have the nemesis enforcer. On the other hand, you have Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> and his gi. <gee. laughs> Let's go, nerdlinger. <laughs> Remember when he got illegally kicked in the face and then uh, Daniel still, won? He still won. That, that is a that 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 movie is actually I, I watched it. It was obviously meant in a little bit in jest, but it was like talking about how Daniel Sun is the villain of that movie. Yeah. But when you really watch it, you're like, he fucking was. Like he he literally antagonized. Like <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like, the dude was a douche. But oh, like, yeah. But he actually he responded like Daniel Sun responds to the guy being a douche with physical violence. Yeah. I mean, in reality, Daniel, you know, uh, Daniel LaRusso was, was a bit of a, I mean, he was a bit of a nerdlinger. Yeah, he's a nerdlinger, but he's the villain of that yeah. film. Yeah, and he, he, like, I kind of like that back in the 80s. It's like, he would respond by, you know, physical violence. It's just, it's fine, but they did it in a structured way, you know? Granted, it was an illegal move. Nowadays, it's like, oh, man, <laughs> you've antagonized Daniel LaRusso? Oh, man, he's going to go get his grandpa's gun and bring it to school <laughs> now. That's what's going to happen. Yep. Yeah, it's terrifying, but... Yeah. <laughs> Unless he's fighting the Nemesis Enforcer, then he's... <laughs> the Nemesis Enforcer didn't talk. He just, like, grunted. I think he just right? made a noise. Yeah, he had the wings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he just made noise. Because Globulus was the guy with the snake tail. Yeah. Yeah. His name was Globulus. <laughs> <laughs> he was voiced by uh, Rocky's trainer from Rocky. Uh, Burgess Meredith. Burgess Meredith, really? Yeah, oh, he wow. voiced Globulus. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's a terrible movie. <laughs> it's It really, it makes no sense. All right. So, what other gaming stuff do we have to talk about? We got some time. Mm. Uh, How's the Shadows over Instrad or whatever it's called? Uh, it's a great magic set. It's really popular. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually one of the most popular sets they've done in a while. Um, even more so than uh, Battle for Zendikar, which is impressive. But the the set overall is better. Um, yeah. Yeah. The set the set has more good cards. Um, really well designed. Uh, also, there's been. Uh, there's been a glut of drama with uh, Wizards of the Coast lately in Magic. They, uh, they, so Wizards has a thing which is a, uh, it's the Platinum Pro prog- program. Yeah. Which is something you can earn by earning enough Pro points, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty cush deal. It like when you, if you earn enough Pro points in a, in the season. You get this thing where they give you like two thousand dollars in appearance fees when you show up to tournaments. Each like just showing up it gives you two grand. Uh, you get paid accommodation. Like it's a it's a very cush deal if you can get it. But like yeah. it's like it's like twenty nine guys. Uh, yeah, there, there's very few people. Yeah, who... there's not a lot of people who are going to qualify for it. And um, Wizards uh, last month, I think they basically revealed they're gutting the program uh, they're like they're like this plat they're like this is the, this is going to be reduced to this this is gonna be reduced to that we're not giving this out we're increasing the prize payouts for worlds and this and people like just demolished them about it and one of the biggest gripes which is totally legitimate uh and i agree with one wizards can do whatever they want with the program and i, I don't think there's too many people who like dispute that because it's their program that's their advertise like they're paying to advertise their game. They're, they they yeah. want they want to have pros and one of the ways to get the same guys playing the games repeatedly is to accommodate their travel cuz they do, you know, it's worldwide. So like it's pre- even a guy who's like decently successful at magic uh you know going to a pro tour or going to a grand prix, he's probably not going to win. 
Yeah. Even if he's really good. So but like, you want Daniel LaRusso going to your tournament. Right. Because, you want him there. Yeah. And, you know, because people are going to start recognizing him. And the more tournaments you go to, the better you are, the more chance you have of at least placing. Like, if you top eight repeatedly, you can become, like, a, you know, a, a household magic name. And people will be like, oh, okay, I know a that Household guy. magic name? Yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. it. That, I, I quantify that with magic. Like, <laughs> if you're into magic, you, you probably know at least, at least a handful of pros. Um, and... You know, and then you can build that into a lucrative career of writing articles, basically. Yeah. That's like that's the journey of becoming a magic pro. Um, but it's really hard to do on your own dime because, you know, you're like, well, I want to go to Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> it's yeah. like, uh, it's kind of expensive, so I'm not going to go because, you yeah. know, it's, it's too much money. But Wizards is like, well, we'll pay you. And it basically defers the cost of your flight, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, Which is kind of cool. Right. It's cool. It's awesome that they do it. And uh, it's, it's in, in the end of the day, like the amount of money Wizards makes a year, it's not, not a ton. Um, but they didn't realize how many people were going to make platinum oh. when they decided things. So there's a lot more people than they expected. So that's why they're trying so to, so they only wanted like probably right. 20. That's why they're, that's why they're cutting the program. Cause way more people made it than they thought. Well, they, um, if they're going to do that, then they should probably just increase. Well, yeah, but they, that's the, the story continues the, Ooh. so they want to, they want to glut, you know, they want to gut the program, make it less. And, the biggest gripe people had, and I completely agree with this, and I'm glad that Wizards Wizards did redact. They did they did uh, go back on this. They they said for now we're going to keep it the way it is. Uh, they did they took away their gutting of the program. But the biggest gripe people had is that you pulled the rug out from under us because the season's not even over yet, but it's almost over. So you they basically went mid season, and were like they were like, well, you're not going to earn this thing we said you'd earn when the season started. Oh. So that's that's the thing, and that's what people called them out on the most. And they were like, okay, well, like they're like, for, we're going to keep it for now. And I think all the, the, what's going to do is they're going to keep it, and then when the next season comes, they're going to they're going to just go to the what they wanted to do, where ever, all the numbers are reduced and stuff. Which is again, like I said, it's fine, but it, it is bullshit that they tried to do it in the middle, middle of the season of the season, where like you have guys who've been like spending money, you know, working hard, trying to earn that, you know, earn those like training and montages, that yeah, sort of thing. montaging, yeah. and like you know they're they're like, well, hey, working hard for the magic. <laughs> yeah, I was like, now I can't do this shit, you know, and like the Hall of Famer fees, like they're reducing, but none of the Hall of Famers give a shit. Um, the Hall of Famer appearance fees are like they were like too much money anyway, and like most of the Hall of Famers are like I don't fucking care, like I'll still go because <laughs> they get invite because the the if you make the Hall of Fame, you basically have an open invite to every tournament, and you get paid just for showing up. Yeah, I mean like because I I you know it's not necessarily magic, but I every once in a while like something pops up on my feed about like e gamers and like getting passports and stuff like that, and I'm just kind of like. Oh, this is kind of silly and ridiculous on multiple levels. I mean, it's a tournament. Yeah, I know. I know people enjoy it, but it's just like, I know they they get like really into it. I'm just this is kind of silly to me. I mean, it's because you're not playing. I know. <laughs> I I know. I I I would never like even if it's a game I played like relatively competitively. Like I don't know if I'd ever want to travel to play the game. I kind of like just like playing the game because it is a game, not necessarily. Well, you also do minis games, which are like it's true. Like to someone I, I, that we I talked to, I was talking to one of my customers about it, and he's like, uh, you know, card games beat beat out minis games so easily because like there's not there's not the massive investment. The there's like the that and by that I mean time because in in the end, card games are more expensive than minis games over the over the years you have to buy more frequently you buy less money more frequently with card games yes uh miniatures games is more money less frequently um unless you're like me well yeah you will again again you have a problem um true. so like there's uh speaking of problems i i, I do want to i do want to talk to them though i want those lord of the rings figures <laughs> um the uh so the uh big deal is like other than if something sucks in a miniatures game it is going to take literal years to fix. to fix it yeah in card games they fix it fucking fast yeah. like if, if a card game metagame gets completely like like ass fucked they're like well this card's banned now like force of will is a great example the uh they recently they basically rotated in advance um so rotation is you have x number of sets that are legal for play and then you push x number of sets out of the format uh you basically mass ban and then like they go into the next blocks so Force will set up to rotate like magic. So there's currently there's four sets in the Grim block or Grim cluster, and then there are currently three sets in the Alice cluster. The fourth Alice cluster set is not out yet. And what's supposed to be is it's supposed to go to eight sets, and then when the first set comes out 
of the next cluster after Alice, that rotates the Grim Cluster out of the format. So you can no longer use the Grim Cluster cards. You can only use Alice in the new one. Uh, and then the cards usually rotate into legacy formats. So like in Magic, it is modern, legacy, vintage. And in uh, Force Will, it's... Uh, it's what do they call it extend i think they call it extended uh whatever they, you could call the it whatever thing. you want i'll be like yeah sure <laughs> okay yeah. they have the same thing we're like they have like deeper card pools yeah uh it's called keurig it's so, a keurig format keurig so one of the uh so the, the metagame has been like really stagnated and like fucked up for a while with force will because of the because of like the one of the rulers is just broke and using some of the older cards like they just they basically made odd deck like this is the deck. Like, if you don't play this deck, you are doing yourself a disservice because you're probably just going to lose. Yeah. So what they did is rather than ban the ruler or do any sort of selective bannings, they're just like, we're just rotating early. So they took all of the Grim Cluster cards and basically were like, whoop, they pushed them out. Now you can only use Alice Cluster. So, like, that happens. And that that's, like, that's pretty huge. Like, that's kind of unheard of with a card game. But even then, it's still a fix. With a miniatures game, they would have just been like, well, let's keep going. Let's it's keep a, going. Let's keep going. You know, like yeah. War, War Machine's a great example. There was like I'd say three good years of the game being pretty shit, and then like now they're finally doing another mark, which is great. Yeah. Well, I think I you know I was thinking about this after we talked about last time with the with the War Machine and the War Machine Hordes, the new mark, is that um, I tend to think mini games like when a new edition comes out or something like that when a new game comes out and people are playing it, like you got the variation on lists are huge. And then once all those variations of lists get funneled down to like What's two good? or three lists, that's when you know you need a new edition. It's like it, beforehand, it probably you should probably do that about you know a little bit before it gets cycled down into those three lists that everyone right. is playing. But yeah, it, it could be pretty bad. And speaking of crazy ass miniatures games, uh, did you see the army that your roommate was playing at the local gaming store? <laughs> the uh, ponies and trolls. Yes, people did not like the ponies. But they like the, the trolls. trolls. Um, is he is is Brian here? Uh, I, I wish I would I would like to bring him on to see if if uh, if if he won that game. <laughs> I'm gonna guess he did. Yeah, I, he probably did. I was so I was I was like, huh, that's funny. And then the more I thought about it, the more I got angry at that <laughs> army. Dude, it's Kings War. You sort of the fuck you want. I, I know, but it's like at the same time, it's like if it was anything, not not anything else, but I mean, if it was like any sort of gaming property thing or just like done up well i probably wouldn't have minded i would i would like to immediately throw this out there do you know the last winning army for the warhammer fantasy yeah we talked about it it's before. fucking bug the, the toys bug, the bug toys yeah, yeah. i mean it's bug toys it's the same thing i mean maybe even if the my little ponies were painted they are painted pink and purple no 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 i'm talking like <laughs> hand painted by the person who's running it i probably wouldn't have cared that much but it's just like you just took toys and slapped them on a couple yeah, it's pieces a, of... it's, a, it's a gag army yeah like I... that's i would not want to see, see like that like if i was going to do a joke army like that that's what i would do like i would do something just outrageous outrageous because, because the people who spend like years working on things like the monty python bretonians and like i, I just don't get that i was like why like that's like the why yeah it's like because if you want to make an army that's a joke like a literal like a like baseball ogres or uh the the monty python bretonians or the hello kitty marines or the hello kitty necrons or any of those just gag armies that are just jokes why would you invest the money and the time in a real expensive hobby and just ruin it with that if you're I, gonna do the joke just do the joke like uh, I, I understand. Brian didn't do it, but he was planning on doing a elemental army for the uh, Clash of Kings, which was going to be literal rocks glued to bases and uh, woodland scenic trees glued to bases with googly eyes. Yeah, that's what I would do. Like, it, like that's that's a gag army. Like, that's the amount of time that one should invest in an army that's going to be a literal yeah. joke. I would I would disagree on the Monty Python one just because it's still really cool looking and it still works as a medieval army. I mean, the only difference between that and anything else is that your your knights have are two people and one behind them has coconuts. That's the only difference between that and any other medieval. But army. it's very silly. It's silly, yes. But it, as we all know, Camelot is a very silly. <laughs> it's place. a very silly place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, plus I mean, it's like it's like way to pick the most played thing in the fucking yeah. universe. Well, I would say you probably see the Alice in Wonderland Bretonian army more than you'd see the Monty Python. Sure, one. I'm just saying it doesn't yeah. matter. It's like whatever. That, God, was that, was, that was another really nicely done army, though. Uh, 
I don't care. It's nicely done. It's a fucking joke. Like, don't waste the time. The baseball ogre one not only was a joke, RB, but was also really shittily put together. It was, you know, it's like I don't mind if you if it's a. I think that's the difference. Between, I don't mind if it's an expertly crafted <laughs> joke. If it's expertly crafted and it's like, oh, that's that's really nice. I don't mind that as much. It's like mm. when they when it's like. I find it all offensive. It's when you take the, the two parts and smoosh it together and meet it halfway. That's when it becomes really shitty to me. Like Hello Kitty Space Marines are generally poorly painted and poorly conceived, smooshed together. And that's what offends me. It's just like, if you're going to do this joke, do the joke correctly. Don't just be but like, ha, all, ha, 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 That also comes to like, I hate theme armies. Yeah, I guess. Like, if someone was doing, like, like example, like, you're doing a 40k Space Marine army, and you hand convert and hand sculpt all of your Space Marines to look like Fallout power armor, I hate your army. Yeah. Like, I don't even give you a know, shit. You, you would hate great. that, yeah. I don't care if it's great. I fucking hate it. Do you owe me a brotherhood of steel Space Marine army? Fuck you. <laughs> like, I, I hate that shit. I think that's the, the worst. If you want to do a theme army, do a theme of the universe you're in. So, like, you want to do a theme army for, like, vampire accounts, and you want to make them undead elves... Bravo. That's great. That's a, that's an actual like that is a Warhammer army because but Steve, you have a vampire lord who's resurrected a bunch of elves. Great. What about what about the Stormtrooper Space Marine army? Star Wars. Also fuck that. Like <laughs> fuck that super hard. Like <laughs> fuck that harder than anything. <laughs> like that is that is that is literally worse. That's the worst army ever. Is it literally worse than Hitler? Uh literally worse than Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's the new thing. Wow. That's the new thing. Yeah. My new thing is Trump. Say so you're you're worse than Trump. But you you support Trump so well, so uh, much. I do not. You were such a Trump booster. Back <laughs> I in was. The day. I was. You know, it's true. The hairpiece wrangled me in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah. speaking of, so theme armies. Fuck them. I hate yeah. them. I hate that shit. Fucking hate that shit. Like it's the worst. Like you're already playing in a universe that has a background. If you don't like the background of the universe you're playing in, why the fuck are you playing that game? It's true. Like, if, if if you're trying to do a theme, you know, it's just like, yeah. if you don't give a fuck about the background, just fucking slap some fucking gray on your space marines and be like, I don't know, they're space marines. They're gray space. They're, they're gray. The gray. They're the gray marines. <laughs> they're the gray marines. And speaking of uh, the Star Wars, though, it's... Uh, we, um, b -b -b fuck Star Wars. Yeah, that was really loud. Yeah. Uh, Fantasy, <laughs> Fantasy Flight uh, announced that they're doing the... They're finally going to do the Force Awakens uh, RPG. RPG, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think dun, 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 no 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 that's we can't do that anymore. Oh, I'm doing it. Oh, you're doing dun, 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 dun. it. Um, the I think it's a, a I think it's a little early to kind of delve into the new universe. There's been one fucking movie, dude. Are you kidding me? I like, know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I mean, it, I, my feeling is is it it is a little early for this. We shouldn't uh, look. It's already nonsensical. Okay, like the resistance. Why is there a republic and resistance? Well, I don't know. Besides the point. <laughs> besides, it's a little early for that, and it's. You know, you're not you. You told me that the 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 with the Fantasy Flight Star Wars stuff isn't the the system isn't really that good. No, it's fine. It's just the same. You just don't like the the proprietary dice. Oh, it does have proprietary dice. Yeah, and I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, if of, you're not a fan of proprietary dice, then you wouldn't want to well, you wouldn't want to get into it. But that's that's a hallmark of Fantasy Flight RPGs. Well, if for me, minus oddly enough, their war uh their workshop branded ones like Warhammer Wifrip and uh well I'm sorry. The current Wifrip does have proprietary dice. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like they the do. The previous one didn't, and then all of the 40k ones had percentage. Yeah, but they had they had the even the previous ones though they didn't they have like different size dice were important in that one or is that the new new one? No, no, no. The, the newest the newest Warhammer Fantasy RPG, the most recent one, which is the, it's third edition. Really great game, by the way. Like it's a fan. It's much better than the one that used percentage dice. Like I will I will advocate for that game. Um, it is all proprietary dice. So like you on your like ability card, it'll have like red, red, green, green, like for the dice. Oh. So you grab the two red, two green dice, and you roll them, and then there are symbols, and you match the symbols to see what the skill does. See that that bothers me. Now like a game. The game is very. The game is very much about the mechanics. Yeah. Though the the thing for me with proprietary dice, I don't mind proprietary dice if you could sub them out for regular dice. Like, for example, Saga has proprietary dice for the game. Like each die has like a, six different symbols on them. And the way you roll, you roll the dice and then you pick the symbols and match them up so you can use whatever ability. But you can even you could sub out those symbols for one, two, three, four, five, six. OK. And it doesn't matter. You can use sure. your own dice for it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Like, you know, a, a convenience system is OK. You know, if you want to do it like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, the the dice you like you have to use them for the other games. Like you literally have to. Yeah. Because like, a lot of them, a lot of the 
proprietary fancy flight dice involve um, blank like, sides. Yeah, they're like D8s and blanks and everything else mm-hmm. on there. It's all... And then and they have different grades because like there's like like uh, the Warhammer one I know for sure uses at least two colors, but like it'll have like a D6. Like let's just say for the sake of argument, it has blue, green, red. They're all D6s, but the blue has one spot missing, the red has two spots That's missing, the, yeah. and the green has three spots missing. When you missing. need to have a GURPS-style conversion chart <laughs> to play the game with regular dice, that's when it gets yeah, too no, complicated you can't, for you me. Cannot play, you just you cannot play them with regular dice. Maybe I'll dice. say Battletech-level uh, conversion um, chart. The, 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 I mean, the system works. It's cool, but like because of the, the because they're, built, they're really built around the dice and stuff, yeah. the games are much more about the mechanics than they are about like the role playing. Yeah. If I'm, I'm going to play Star Wars RPG. I'll stick with the West End. West End. Yeah. Sure. West End girls. Sure. Um, and so uh, one last thing. Uh, last week was Little Wars in Chicago land. Yeah, did you go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. I went. <laughs> um, with, with Little Wars. Does that mean they have 10 millimeter fantasy figures? Um, Old Glory was there. They didn't have them there, but they well, they didn't have they don't. Old Glory doesn't do fantasy. They do like uh, historical. So. If you wanted, but I mean, if you were doing, if you're doing a Tomb Kings army though, like you could just buy a 10 millimeter Egyptian army and it would work almost 100 percent the same. Except they're not skeletons. They're not skeletons, but you could also have you know non skeleton guys in your skeleton army. You know, I mean, one in their original background, there were there was supposed to be a mixed army. Yeah. Uh, like, or there is a mixed army described in the original sixth edition Tomb Kings book of like it's an army of like the it's like the ancestors fighting with their uh descendants yeah so, like it's pretty cool it's like yeah it's like they have like a they have like human bata- the because the pharaoh uh the the tomb king he's like he he like rose up and like there was still people living where his, his like burial chamber was so he's like i am the pharaoh like a month on top and like the, the the newest ruling pharaoh was like oh um obviously you should be ruling so what do you want us to do and they're just like okay we're gonna team up so then like they just like team up and they have a human and skeleton army at the same time and yeah. i was like that's fucking cool yeah, exactly, like, and like how cool that like you could have you could have like a municipal a municipal humans because they're just like yeah no that skeleton over there who's like stabbing the shit out of your friend that's my grandpa I'm gonna fucking kill you <laughs> there you go and the um but uh, Ed Spedigu the great Ed Spedigu was there oh nice uh, yeah um, he, galactic he has his own uh, 15 millimeter fantasy line really yeah so I know mean, it's it's bigger than like what we normally would want but a lot of the monster figures that he did would be 100% perfect for 10 mil. So That's like, awesome. He has, like, uh, rock golems that look... Uh, or um, steam golems that look, like, fucking fantastic. That would be awesome in a in a, in a War Master army. Sick. So I, I wish I could remember the name of it. I've, I'll maybe put it up a link or something like that. And speaking of friends who have stuff for uh, for sale now, Rob Hawkins. I didn't know he had, like, a, a, his own little They're brand fantasy new. story. Yeah. Brand new. He's got some, like, uh, tomb, uh, some tombstones and some, like... Mausoleums. Mausoleums. Mausoleums yeah, it looks and, sick. Yeah, I guess it's just all this crap you still like. No, Vampire Council make a comeback someday. <laughs> Vampire Council make a comeback someday. I'm going to keep making this. I'm going to crank him out, man. I'm going to keep. That's uh, for you, Rob. That's, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I guess he that, just took all the train that he made for it and his started. My, selling his mighty it. heart is breaking. <laughs> There's oh, no more Vampire Council. Council. <laughs> just give it up, man. Eighth edition, it's gone. Yep. Um, he could play ninth. Yeah, but he's, he's selling. Ninth it. is gaining ground, I guess. Yeah, so uh, go to. Which uh, makes sense. We should keep like a chart up on our Facebook page of like. Age of Sigmar, Ninth Edition, and like Kings of War, and see like where we think. I the think I, I actually think Ninth is going to eclipse Kings of War. You think? I think so. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I've I've uh, now that I've played like some of the Kings of War Second Edition, um, it's so not fantasy. Like I I think a lot of people who like play it, they're going to be like, uh, and yep. they'll probably go back. They'll go to Ninth because huh? because the game is really simplistic. It doesn't uh, just at, go back to six. Well, I mean, obviously the, the the sane choice is going back to sixth, but you know, no one's doing that. No. Um, one of the biggest gripes I have about the game is the um, the inter army balance is fine. Like I don't think. I think the armies are pretty well balanced against one another. Like, I don't think the orcs are more broke than the undead and are more broke than this or that. No, I think the But inside the army, the actual armies themselves, but balance between their choices is atrocious. Like you, despite what, no, if, if you're playing Kings War, don't listen to anyone's opinion except mine right here. Okay. You need a flying unit, at least one, if not more. You need to do a copy paste it a few times. Then you need your, your you need uh, some shitty infantry to screen, and then you need good units. Like you just th- that game rewards you taking the best stuff multiple times because bad stuff 
always sucks because the reward for flank charges and rear charges are more dice, but you're getting more dice of shit. So if I flank charge your, if I front charge your unit with skeletons, I get 20 dice. Uh, my block of skeletons, I get 20 dice. I need uh, fives and whatever your, you know, damaging is. So let's say you have an armor, an armor of five. So I need fives and fives. Okay. So that means you're hitting, you're going to hit on fours. I know you're, you're going to hit one out of every four times. Um, so that's that's twenty five percent. So on twenty dice, that is five dice. And then I need five to wound. Okay, so then you'll you'll maybe once or twice. Okay, so you're saying two wounds to the front. Yeah. Now the flank charge is doubled. Okay. So that means let's just go straight up doubling it four. Four. So that means I do four wounds, and then most of the decent blocks have like a nerve of like mm, fifteen, seventeen, which means that if I do four wounds, I can't break your unit. Yeah. Even from the flank. From the rear, I would get tripled attacks, so we'll say six. And rear charges are super hard to get in the game. So I do six with my skeletal bones. So I still can't break your unit. <laughs> like, and, and that's the reward, because that, there's no combat res. So the reward for charging is more dice. So in other words, it's like you can spend half the points and get a skeleton unit that's really ineffective no matter where it charges, or you can spend double the points and get a really good unit that if you get a flank charge, you're going to destroy the piss out of what you hit. So taking an army that's got all crushing strength uh, and has flying units to get flanks and you know, crushing strength from the front that has like big beefy units. Like if my, so my army, uh, my undead army is all ghouls, zombies, and skeletons. And it fucking sucks. It's terrible. It's almost unplayable. And I almost, I mean, it's literally unplayable. So I'm going to be selling it at the game's post auction. There you go. Uh, but if my army was... Uh, wraiths, mummies, vampires. I'd have a very good army. Mummies. Yes, yeah. but I'd have a very good army if that was if that was what I had built. So I just. So what you're saying is, is my Bretonian army would be amazing. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. It, I also have flying units. And, yeah, it would probably be good. Yeah. It, but that that's the thing. Like you, you need to you need to make like the game is super hostile if you're not playing a munchkiny list. Like list building is probably ninety percent of that game. Yeah. Like you, you need to have a very good list and otherwise like you just, it's, it's, you're going to lose. Like right. you're just going to lose. There's nothing you can do. So let's wrap this up. Cause I got to go pee. Uh, go to planet for all your planet arbitrary needs. You can follow me on Twitter at planet arbitrary. You can follow Steve at play on Steve at play on Steve. Uh, like our Facebook page backslash game classy podcast. Um, on it, we talk about butts and, uh, British listeners complain about America. Um, and West End girls. <laughs> and West End girls. Um, also, you can go to our... You know what? I'm not even going to plug the Reddit anymore because Reddit's such an awful fucking place. <laughs> uh, but you could go to our YouTube page, uh, Game Classy Podcast on YouTube, where we post our own podcast and the podcast of Comic Book Logic, one of our sister podcasts, where we talk all about comic book movies. Hey, Steve, guess what our next comic book movie we're talking about is going to be? Captain America Civil War? Yes! <laughs> I knew it! We should really do the 70s Captain America instead. We did. Oh, well, we did the 90s one, the last. Oh, rubber ears, baby. Yeah. <laughs> why, does that, why does that mask have rubber ears? It's because of the guy, Matt Salinger, who was playing Captain America. The, the way that, I guess, whatever material the mask was made out of would, like, irritate his ears because it would cut into the ears. <laughs> so instead of, like, making the holes bigger or making using better material, they just made rubber ears and put it over it. <laughs> that, I saw the Honest trailer for that movie, and I was just like, holy fuck, does that movie look fucking bad? Oh, it's terrible, but it's so fun to watch. It's, like, one of those, like... I didn't, I didn't get quite into it because I was a little drunk on the podcast, but it's one of those movies like Plan 9 for outer, from Outer Space where it's so bad that it's you're like, such a train wreck. You're like, all right, I get it. I get it. This is this is fun. It's it's so bad. It be, it goes circles all the way around to being fun again. I gave it like a beep because I'm like, <laughs> it's so awful that you can't help but be like, oh, this is fun. I don't I don't mind. And it's only like 90 minutes long. Like you can't be mad at a movie that that's short. I'm going to see Civil War tonight and it's going to be like a six hour movie. I mean, it's literally going to be longer than the real Civil War. I've been War. hearing, I've been hearing uh, mixed mixed reviews about it. Um, everything I've seen is positive, so I'm going to, but I'm going to see it for myself. The people I hear bitching are people who are real big comic fans. Yeah. So it's kind of like I have to discredit your opinion. All I care about is the big jets versus sharks fight scene that's going to take place in that park. Although lot. I heard Marissa Tomei is playing Aunt May. Yeah. Which, after seeing the wrestler and watching her do the striptease thing. That ain't not me, baby. <laughs> you know, we're getting older, Steve. That's the only thing I could say. I don't know, man. She's pretty hot. <laughs> but once again, we're getting older. It's like 
It's like MILF porn when you're when you're in your 30s. All of a sudden, it becomes a whole different thing. You're like, that's not a MILF. She's like younger than I am. <laughs> I mean, she's just hot in general. Like, well, Aunt yeah. May's not supposed to be hot. She's supposed to be like. Well, a... she's hot to us because we grew up being like. But that doesn't matter. She's not supposed. To... She's supposed to be like a gray-haired old lady. Yeah, going but like, someone... Peter, eat your wheat cakes. <laughs> but to someone who's like 16 or 17, seeing Marissa Tomei, they might not find her that attractive. But she's not an old gray-haired woman. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I mean, just because she doesn't have to be an old gray haired woman that's aunt may just it's just like spider-man doesn't have to be a white teenage kid well, yeah, but aunt may is supposed to be like an elderly person she doesn't have to be nah, don't be of, ageist it's kind of weird I, I think it's weird too but i think I it's more ageist to hire the younger person isn't that the thing i guess but i don't it doesn't bother me either way um i, don't know, I just don't want Aunt May to be hot because now i'm now i'm gonna be like you're gonna have naughty that, thoughts now, about I, now i have weird now i have weird sexual fantasies about ramming her from behind while she's talking about wheat cakes and i'm just like god damn it <laughs> to each their own steve to each their own. I mean, I wanted it to be an elderly Aunt May I'm ramming from behind talking about wheat cakes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> now it's own. Marissa Tomei. So my, my sexual fantasies about Aunt May have been ruined. They've been destroyed. They've been destroyed by Marissa Tomei's pretty hot body. Uh, so you could... Uh... And also, you could uh, listen to our sis- the other sister podcast, uh, Pat's Retro Video Game Review Podcast, a.k.a. Play On, which... Retro Video Game Reviews! <laughs> Where Steve and, uh, and uh, Pat... Uh, talk about Pokemon. Pretty much, that's what it devolves. Pat down doesn't to. talk. Pat doesn't. Pat, Pat, Pat hates Pokemon. I hate Pokemon too. It's awesome. So. I love it. I love it. And, and my favorite, my my favorite conversation still on Play On was when Pat uh, was like ripping apart uh, point and click adventure games, and I was like, "But you like Seventh Guests? Uh, like, yeah. Like it's literally a point and click adventure game. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, a, I like point and click adventure games. I, I think they're great. They were the, they were the blockbusters in the nineties. Like yeah, absolutely. Like they the, have the, the Night of the Tentacle. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Indiana Jones and the all of those point and click adventure games were the like they were the triple a titles for, i'm just thinking of all lucas arts games now that i'm thinking about it i mean they did that yeah. was that was a huge part of their business thing but i mean all the you know grim fandango Grim Fand- but that was uh, also lucas film the, the no that was not lucas arts yeah it was was it really? yeah wow shit uh the dig the dig um, wasn't oh maybe the dig was uh, the dig was a sp- i think the dig was well no dreamworks didn't exist i know the dig was based on a script from steven spielberg but i don't know if it was made by uh lucas lucas arts or not obviously full throttles lucas arts uh the day of the tentacle yeah, the dig is LucasArts. King's Quest, Sierra. That's were, not. Yeah, they were a big one. Um, there were a couple other. There was one. I'm, I've been trying to remember it, and I fucking. It's been bugging the shit out of Zork. me. Not Zork. Zork's not point and click. Zork's no, a, t- a, a, a text adventure. Text, which, are, which are fun. I actually played a. Uh, not I a was, big text adventure fan. I played it when I was like a way like years ago. I got really. When uh, you were a wee lad. Uh, no, not, not wee, but I, I was really sick. Like, and I was like, I had a fever and like I stayed home and I was playing a love. I found a Lovecraft text adventure and it fucked with me because like while I was like, you know, I was on cough medicine and shit like I'm fucking reading it. And I'm like, what? Is <laughs> and like I was it was not it was it was a very out like trippy experience. And uh, I was I actually got genuinely like I freaked out. I like got in my bed and I was like, fuck this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that actually happened. It was pretty cool. But uh yeah, so King's Quest, a uh, bunch of bunch of point and click adventure games. They were the, just they were the they were the benchmark of PC games. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Um, so yeah, you could listen to Play On, aka Pass Retro Video Game Review Podcast, um, and you could learn about Pokemon. Uh, so Steve, uh, until next time, uh, I, I you know what I had a really good sign off yeah. that I uh, forgot, so I'm just gonna go with the classic. May all your hits be crits. Game classy. <laughs> <laughs>